Hey, Fellowship Asheville. Thanks for joining us for the post-sermon chat. Um, I'm glad that you are, are still with us. Listen, this chat is designed for you to ask questions that maybe um, God stirred up as, as we were going through the service, or if you just have any comments that you want to share, that would be great too. As you're thinking about that, um, and if you haven't chimed in and said hi on whichever platform you're on, please do, because I'd love to say hi to you. Um, uh, as you think about that, I want to talk a little bit about what Carr did at the very end of the service, where she read from Lamentations um, about God's faithfulness. The book of Lamentations is a book about grief and sadness and, and dealing with um, uh, life when life isn't going the way that you think it needs to go. And yet, in the middle of that book, is the inspiration for the song, Great is Your Faithfulness to God, uh, sung to God, Um, which I think is so important for us to understand that in the midst of hard times, in the midst of grief, in the midst of, of, of trials and tribulations, in the midst of a pandemic, um, we can still see and focus on God's faithfulness. And I think that's very, very important. When I was in Russia, um, they uh, sing Great is Thy Faithfulness. They sing it in Russian, of course. Uh, but what's interesting is, you know, like this morning, we sang three verses. In Russia, they have 12, I think that's right, um, verses of that song because They've been through very hard times, the church has there, and they've got 12 different verses to express just how faithful God is, which always meant a lot to me. I mean, uh, them singing it in Russian and me not understanding Russian, it did get a little long uh, when they went through those verses, but for them, it was real and it was powerful. Um, So I just, I love that. Well, let me know um, what uh, you're thinking. Let me know what resonated with you. Uh, Say hi if you haven't yet, and I'd love to say hi too. I see the the Bridges are on the Church Online platform. Uh, Marie Blankenship is there. Patrick Vernon says, great message, Fred. Thank you for your dedicated preparation and thoughtful, humble delivery. Well, you're very welcome. It is, um, for sure, it is, it is some work um, putting the message together, but I really, uh, I really enjoy it. I even enjoy the process and enjoy um, uh, just kind of marinating on the truth of God as I'm preparing uh, in the comments on the online platform, Kari Spear made the comment about um, there was there's nothing left to conquer. I, I said that in my message and how she needed to hear that. And Kari, I wanted you to know, not only did I give you a shout out in the message, but that um, I read that somewhere. I can't remember where I read it, to be honest. Uh, but um, that resonated with me quite a bit, too, that in my spiritual life, like the, the, the conquering has already been done. Um, the, the war has already been won, and so my job is to cooperate um, with Jesus and not to, I don't have to fight, I just have to cooperate. And so for me, that, that resonated with me a lot too, so I'm glad it did, it did for you as well. Let's see, Andrew Neighbor um, on Church Online says, absolutely, God is good and faithful no matter what our circumstances are. I've definitely seen that in my life. You sure have, Andrew. You have gone through a lot recently. Um, let's see, we've got the Rosses over on Facebook, Beautiful Worship. So, hey, Rosses, hope y'all are doing well. Um, let's see if we've got any other comments or anything over there. Nope, nope, nothing on Facebook. If you are watching on Facebook, I would love to know that you're here, so feel free to say hi. Um, if you have any questions, we'll talk about that. Jennifer Wilcox says, good morning, over on Church Online. Hey, Jennifer, your husband did a stellar job on sound today. Um, uh, So thanks for sharing him with us this morning. All right, what else? What else do we have here? Any any questions or thoughts from today's message? I'd love to I'd love to hear them. I see Carol King over on Facebook says hello. So hey Carol. Hope you're doing well all the way downstairs. Just finished up the FK Zoom. Um, so that's fun. Jen, um, Jen All says hello. Reagan Story says hello. Hope y'all are doing well. Um, if you're um, seeing the ladies chime in here, 
You know, this weekend we did the IF Gathering. We hosted that this weekend, and the IF Gathering is a virtual women's conference that has been held for a few years now. This was our first time to host it. Uh, if you were able to participate, I'd love for you to leave a comment and let me know what you thought, um, um, because like I said, it was our first time to host it. And, um, you know, with the, the IF Gathering, um, you, you know, you've got a variety of, of speakers Um, speaking into the issues of our time biblically. And so, yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts. Let's see, Stephanie Quigley on Facebook says, Hi, thanks for the message. You're welcome. Um, Brian Bridges said, We love the challenge to be a church that that gives God's love that breaks down barriers. Praying that for all of us. Me too, uh, Brian. Um, I pray that for, I pray that for myself. Um, One of the things in the, in the women's conference, uh, Christine Kane was speaking and, um, uh, she talked about the whole idea of revival starting with you. Um, and so she, she talked about um, drawing a circle around yourself, like getting on, the, getting on the floor and taking a piece of chalk and drawing a circle around yourself. And I thought what she said was very bold because she said, do not pray for revival for your city. Do not pray for revival for your country. Pray for revival that starts right there with everyone in that circle, meaning you. And, I, and I've heard that illustration before, but it was just really powerful uh, as she was talking about it. Um, and if you're wondering why I was uh, on, why I was watching the women's conference, it's because with Amy being uh, at home sick, I got to take over. I got to take her part in that. So I got to host the women's conference. Me and Stacy and and and. Uh, uh, Megan Meadows got to do that. It was it was great fun. So I got to be a barista uh, yesterday morning, which was fun, and so I got to watch in on some of those sessions. It was great. Let's see. The, uh, the Millers, an absolutely amazing experience. So Christine Miller from the, the IF Gathering, absolutely amazing. It was filled with so much truth. It was like a cool drink of water that I didn't even realize I needed in the midst of this pandemic. It really was. Um, let's see. Stephanie Quigley says it was really inspiring. It was. Um, I'm curious too. Do you remember who were some of your the the speakers that you resonated with, the speakers that inspired you the most? If you remember their names, I would love to know that too. Um, let's see. Amy said, "So thankful to have all of you stepping into and helping hosting." It was fine, Amy. It was actually a lot of fun. For I I do enjoy doing events, um, um, and they take a lot of work. Even a small one like this one, where we only had, we only had like twenty-seven people in in person, and then and then about that many uh, virtually. It does take a lot of work, but it was it was it was well worth it and great time. So I hope you're feeling better and that you can get back with us soon. But until then, we got you. All right. See, so Kelly Cranford said it was a great time. I learned so much. Um, it was so rich. For those of you um, who did go, you know there were various breakout sessions, and I think you can watch any of the breakout sessions up until Monday night at midnight. Um, so um, um, uh, there was uh, Lisa Turkhurst did a talk on forgiveness. She just wrote a book called Forgiving What You Can't Forget is the name of her book. And I've heard a talk that she gave on the book and then listened to that breakout session because I was in the kitchen um, uh, here in the building. That's the one that was in the fellowship hall at the time. And if you haven't had a chance to listen to that one, go listen to it. It was incredible. Um, let's see, Brian Bridges is from Jan, Catherine Wolf, and Joni Erickson Tata. Yes, that talk was so good. So you had um, Catherine Wolf, Joni Erickson Tata, both wheelchair bound, talking about their experience in COVID uh, and how Jesus has met them. And I heard multiple people say after that session, they're like, okay, I've got nothing to complain about. Like, like it was just such an inspiring time to see these two ladies. Let's see, Jen Al says, uh, it was so rich. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm glad you were able to come. It was very rich. All right, any other thoughts or questions, maybe from a message? Or like you said, if you want to chime in from the IF gathering, it'd be great. Let's see, I loved uh, Francis Chan, George Chan. Yeah, his name's Francis Chan. Um, passion and spirit. Listen, if you could boil Francis Chan down to one word, it would be passion. Uh, Any time I've heard him speak, like there are times I'm like, man, how does this guy go through his day like this? Like it is so much passion that he has. 
um, uh, that it, it, it's neat. Let's see, Francis Chan, insight on how the churches in the Western world have disregarded and forgotten the holiness of a, and, and hallowedness of God. Yeah, it was very, very good. Um, you know, he was a missionary. Well, I don't even know if missionary is the right term. His whole family moved to, um, they moved to Hong Kong. Is that where he said they moved? I can't remember. Um, um, and, you know, and he was a pastor of a mega church, large church in California, doing well, but uh, felt like there was this tension between uh, kind of the Western, the way we do church and the way he felt like God was leading him to do church. And then, too, even for him personally, this idea of fame, like Christian celebrity uh, versus his Christian faith and how those two things were colliding. Um, and, and so that was just part of it. That wasn't the only reason, but that was part of it. And I remember him telling the story when somebody came up, and this was a very small part because he wanted to make sure that, that this was clear. This was a different interview that I heard with him. Somebody came up and asked him to sign their Bibles, to autograph their Bibles. And, and that was this thing that made him go, okay, this, this whole Christian celebrity thing has gone too far. Like, that Bible isn't about me. It's about Jesus. And if anything I'm doing, and he did talk about this, if anything he's doing is diminishing uh, the, the role of Jesus in other people's lives, then he needs to step back. And he quoted John the Baptist in John chapter 3, verse 30. Uh, John the Baptist says that he, being Jesus, must increase and I must decrease. And uh, it's one of my life verses, too. And, and it sounds like it was inspiring to Francis Chan, too. So it led all this. So very passionate in his life, for sure. Uh, let's see. Adult names are not my gift. Well, uh, it's, uh, Kelly, it's, uh, Kelly Cranford said that on... Um, um, uh, on the church online platform. And, um, you know, it's pandemic brain. It's fine. Lots of grace here. Lots of grace here. All right, any other thoughts or questions? If not, we'll shut down the post-sermon uh, chat, and I will see you all next week. Uh, just a reminder, uh, Fellowship Kids is in person next week, so go online and register because there's only so many spots available. Um, but we would love to have you there. And please remember to go online and register for services pretty soon. I'll go ahead and tell you all this. Since you stuck with us this far, I'll give you some inside information, which is always fun. Um, uh, Easter Sunday is April 4th. Um, and we are looking to do two services, but here's what we, we need to know. Um, we need to know if one service will fill up before we do the next. And so we're going to put a registration out for the 9 o'clock service. If that fills up and we have a significant waiting list, we'll go ahead and do a second service. But we want to see. So get in the process of registering for a service because it really helps us know uh, how, how many people to expect. Excuse me. Um, um, so, so, so do that. And we're going to put that Easter registration out early this year. Um, so, uh, so be looking for that. Amy also says, reminder, daylight savings is next week. Y'all, we have got to do away with daylight savings. I don't like it. And I don't mind the one earlier in, in the, where we get to get an extra hour of sleep, but this one where the clock steals an hour of sleep, I don't like. So just keep in mind, though, next Sunday is daylight savings. So set your clocks, be ready. But we do get to enjoy uh, a little extra light at night, which is, is fun. At least I enjoy it. I get some balcony time, which is great fun. All right, y'all, I love you. I love being in the church with you. Thanks for who you are. Um, and I'm thankful that you get to join us from wherever you are. All right, talk to you later.